My parents' utility room is a great size and a really well used room in the house, but it wasn't very organized and it wasn't very practical. So I wanted to make it that for them. As you can see, the walls had some black soot residue from an old broken boiler system that has since been replaced, thank God. And there were a couple of shelves, but other than that, there was no real space for vacuums, brooms, laundry baskets, etc., to live. So I started off this project by sketching out how we'd like the cabinets to look and be situated. And then I began measuring up the washer and dryer to make sure it would all fit. Okay, we may have run into issues. So the washing machine and tumble dryer are pretty much exactly the same dimensions. Now, these would fit really quite well in this space. The only problem is we've got a socket here, exhibit A. When I come to build the cupboards, the cupboards are gonna come up in the middle of this plug. Obviously that's gonna look stupid. I can't have it any further back because then the washing machine and tumble dryer won't fit. The other solution is to bring the cabinet further out, but then it just feels like a lot of wasted room, like behind the washing machine is gonna be like a good this much. Let's double check. It kind of looked like that. It feels like it sticks out quite far and it will mean that the depth of the cupboard on the left hand side and the under window cabinet that we're gonna have here will be really deep so you'll be able to fit more stuff in which is probably a bonus what to do what to do what to do i need to figure this out i decided to go with the second option and just have a little bit more room behind which in hindsight is a good idea as it allows more ventilation i headed to a local timber merchant and picked up a couple of sheets of half inch plywood which would be my shelves three quarter inch plywood in particular for the shelf for the dryer and two by twos to create the frames let me tell you i wanted to so badly create seamless cabinets out of plywood alone with pocket holes that just slotted into place no need for frames but there were just too many pipes and sockets running along the walls it just wasn't feasible I removed all the skirting from the area and I had to use my multi-tool to make it a little bit easier in some places. I built the base that everything would sit on top of out of scrap 2x4s that my dad had laying around from an old build. I really made sure that these were secure in place with some heavy duty plugs and screws and used my Bosch Universal Detector to make sure to avoid any pipes and electrics potentially hiding in the walls. I'll leave this link down below for you because this is so handy on a lot of projects. I got a huge splinter. I had to literally rip a chunk of my skin out. <laughs> you may spot I cut a little notch out of this piece to allow for the socket issue that I touched on at the beginning of this video. I'm using the same method as I did with the base to secure my 2x2s to the walls to begin creating that framework. I'm attaching these two by twos to the wall first because I want to make sure that I got the pieces attached without any issues, just with there being so many electricals and pipes in the area. But you could build your frame out first and then attach it to the walls if you'd find that easier. Just whatever you do, use a detector to make sure that you're not drilling into anything that could potentially be dangerous or harmful.
Once I had the first frame built, I added a little more 2x4 at the base to make sure the washing machine would sit on it comfortably. I then cut out some plywood to shape and notched out the corners to give it a snug fit. I decided to go back in and add some more support at the middle of the frame to hold the weight of the dryer. I secured it both into the wall itself using those same plugs and screws and then to the vertical frame either side using pocket holes. Pocket holes are a really strong technique and will give the support that we need for the dryer. Similarly, I cut the three quarter inch plywood to size and shape, notched out those corners so that we could get a snug fit and tested it out by sitting on it. It felt so strong, but being ever conscious of me, I was worried that for some reason it wouldn't take the weight. So I actually went and added another support underneath the shelf so that the middle would also act as a support. Lots of support. <laughs> Hello guys, it's another day. Another day, it's a new day. Um, we are currently painting the MDF, which is gonna be the sides for the units. Mum and dad are helping, they're getting stuck in on this one, bless them, because they know I'm up against time here. So they've been outside painting this for me. It's dried really quickly. We're gonna leave it another probably half an hour. MDF is really absorptive, it absorbs water and paint really quickly so we need to give it a good couple of coats of primer so that when we paint the actual paint on top it looks nice I'm trying to do this thing where we paint them before we put them all together because then it's really difficult to paint like getting in corners and stuff whereas this way if we paint them first we just then have to like tap them all together fill in a little few holes and then give it like one really easy coat Once the primer on the MDF dried, I brought them inside and began assembling them. As I said, I was up against a deadline here, so I had to work in the best order that suited me at the time, but it is more beneficial to paint these before you assemble them, so I suggest that you do that if you try this out. I didn't use wood glue here as it just didn't feel necessary and I'm using 25mm brad nails in my work snail gun and using plenty of nails holds them in place pretty well. Also, this is my first time creating cabinets like this, so please do feel free to pop any tips or constructive criticism below in the comments so that we can all benefit from that knowledge. Although it's coming together, they don't look very neat yet and I am a neat freak. So in order to hide this, I framed the fronts out using six millimeter MDF and that really quite easily hides any ugly and makes it a really professional looking finish. That's gonna stick like a baby's mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just literally tiny bit. Yeah. It needs to make sure that it goes really, really in far. Into the, yeah. Then scrape most of it off. Mm -hmm. They don't leave it like that. No, no. Because that means we have loads of sanding to do. But make sure it's smooth at the same time. Yeah. We might have to do some of them a couple of times. Yeah. It should be quick and it will dry within like an hour. Okay, I've got a tricky space underneath here that's got lots of cuts and grooves to do. So what I've done is got myself some cardboard, sticky taped it together and took my time to create a template. That way I'm just going to take this over to the MDF now and cut it straight and hopefully the first time I cut it it should fit exactly but I'm not going to have any of that back and forth messing around with like making the wrong me measurements etc. So that's a little tip there for you, make a template, make your life easier. By this point I was pretty confident at creating the frames and I was getting them square which is really important. I had one more to make but it was a smaller one that would fit underneath the window and it did need a gap left out of the side panel to allow for the exposed pipes. This cupboard is just for extra storage for laundry detergents and cleaning products but you could quite easily similarly make this with the intention of putting a sink in which would be a great help too. It wasn't something to take on in this project but I do think that it's something that we could do in the future if we wanted to because the pipes are already all there from the washing machine so do let me know if you'd like to see me tackle that one day oh. 
Thank you. Yay! Yay! And it's quite snug. Let's see. You have to leave it like that and put it top on it like that. Oh, don't touch Before that. Before you put it back down. The top that my dad is referring to is the countertop. I managed to pick this up from my local timber merchants for five pounds as it was an off cut that they weren't using. So definitely see what you can find at a bargain. I'm using a new tool here. This is the Works Exact Track. Really helpful for beginners and quick cuts. The built-in track helps to keep your lines super, super straight. And a tip that I have learned is to cut your wood with the design side or the side that you're using facing down. That way you get a really smooth cut. Then we went in and did some finer detailed touch-ups. These are the sort of things that are going to take your DIY from DIY to, did you get this done by a professional? It's probably the most time consuming part, the prep and then the finishing touches, but it makes all the difference. We went in with a couple of layers of wood filler, sanded it down, went in again, sanded it down. We sanded the entire cabinetry and we did a good few coats of furniture paint as well. The one I'm using is the next ultimate paint that you can use on a lot of surfaces and gives a really gorgeous finish. I'll leave the color of it linked in the description box. I'm using the No Nonsense Sanitary Silicone Sealant in white to seal between the countertop and the cabinet side panel. Sanitary silicone is good for places like bathrooms and utility rooms where it may get a little wet or damp. I let it sit for a minute, spray with a mix of washing up liquid and water at a 30 to 70 ratio. And I've started using these Wolfcraft smoothing tools instead of my fingers, much cleaner finish and less mess for me. I cut down 12mm MDF to size to create doors and then wood glued strips of 12mm MDF on top to give the shaker style design I was aiming for. You could also tack these in place with brad nails or just clamp them down and let them dry for an hour or so. Unfortunately, I don't have a great deal of detail for hanging the doors. In all honesty, it was such a nuisance. Definitely not something we want to do again anytime soon. I'm wondering if we perhaps didn't do it in the easiest way, but we did get there in the end. We attached some more modern silver handles. My laser level always comes in handy for this. Again, another tool that you need, so I will leave it linked down below for you. But if you've made it this far, I'm hoping that that means that you found this video really helpful or fun to watch. So it would mean so much to me if you could hit subscribe, leave me a comment and like this video and now I'm ready to show you the big reveal in three two one